Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitemout.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is September 11th, 2020, and this, is, of course, is our weekly Friday video. Look back at last week's uh, eBay auction results, Catawiki, uh, a few things that are happening. There's some, a very good sale on the global member pages right now that sprung up over the weekend. If you're a collector, you've got to check this sale out, and we'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, and what's happening uh, with the upcoming Business in Asia Week and an update on the new website. So let's get into it. See what's going on. All right. The first thing is uh, this. Last week, I had met. Oh, one of the things I wanted to mention was we did do another video this week. Um, uh, earlier this week, if you, a lot of you have seen it, but in case you missed it, um, uh, the Asia Week sales, uh, two of the Sotheby's sales that we covered, we did a, a preview on it. It's about a half hour long. We go through all of the lots. Uh, there's some very good bronzes and metalworks across the board at all the auction houses this time, and Bonhams included. That boy, they got a collection. We're gonna we're gonna take a look at it. And we'll be doing a video on that. But this was for the Sotheby's sales, and they have a couple of extraordinary bronzes in the sale. One of them is depicted here, which I talk about quite a bit because in the video because it's a highly unusual type and then this pair of massive stunning bronzes uh, late Ming early Qing uh, almost you know five and a half six feet tall they're amazing and then of course this really really fine um, uh, clear to loon bottle and other things there's some good stuff in here so check that video out I sort of went this time around I just went through and sort of picked out I always let my what I, what I like influence a bit this time around I just went for the stuff I really really liked as though I was gonna go down there and drop four or five million bucks on stuff <laughs> All right, but anyway, all three of the Bottoms catalogs suddenly appeared over the weekend. They did do them. I was worried that they weren't. And uh, you have the, the, the Ren Lu collection, the fine Chinese art and uh, 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 paintings and so forth. And then this one, Himalayan and, and Southeast Asian art, including some spectacular Nepalese uh, copper alloy bronzes. So you, 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 uh, we're going to try to get a video on that out next week, give a, a, give a focus to that because Bottoms has done a great job. Holy mackerel. This is the catalog. And if you haven't seen it, it's on the, on the reference section over on the website. You can go down and uh, pull it out and go through it. It's just uh, great stuff. Absolutely great stuff all the way through. Beautifully done. Beautiful photography. Good descriptions. And uh, we'll get into that. The other news is, of course, on our own website, what we're doing over here. We, as, as, we, as many of you know, we're developing a site for people to, to be able to come in and use it and to buy, sell, uh, items is fixed price items. You'll have you, sellers will basically have like their own little area, their own shop, and everything will be on. We're going to have all of the listings for starters all on one big page, and then there'll be a separate page for uh, things when we when we get to the point where we have enough traffic and enough interest. We're going to allow put up some small auctions, maybe some big auctions, and uh, see how that goes. And we're and we're working on uh, terms and conditions right now. But this is the uh, we sort of the final uh, look at the how the home page is going to look. We spent a lot of time working on background linking because we didn't want it to be overly cluttered with stuff um, we didn't want it to be distractive. We looked at a lot of other websites to see what they did that works, what the, what didn't work. Um, we, we didn't find much, for example, on, on eBay that we liked that we would want to emulate because it's, it's, it's such a messy thing visually. But we did look at a lot of other sites. And this is what the home page is going to look like, maybe with a, with a few sample things that are available on the site, a blog, and that's it. But off the menu at the top, you'll be able to get to any, almost anything you want. It, it'll, we're going to have a page also linking to the main bid amount site uh, for people who want to look things up because we know a lot of people use like the, the catalogs that we just discussed they like to use the museum uh, links to go look at things the Sotheby's past sales Christie's past sales to do research uh, to, to either learn about more before you buy or, or when you're selling to create your listings that'll all be integrated into here and I think when when you when, when we have people coming in to post things and list things they'll be able to use those links very effectively to find out more about the item they're selling and to give them some help in creating the listings um, I, I think there's it's, it's a good way to do it. Uh, signing up for the account, your account or your site uh, here will enable you to do, you can do either buy or sell. Uh, it's a, it's a sort of an open-ended arrangement and we're going to have some rules uh, about what's included, what have to be in the listings in order to sell on the site, especially a declaration of age. Uh, if you have trouble with that, we will help you with that uh, and so forth. Uh, or, or you can go over, there'll be a link to the forum page. If you think of selling something um, and you're not sure about one aspect or two aspects, or the age exactly you can or sometimes it's about is it Japanese or, or Chinese because the, 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 there can be confusion there you can go over to the forum put it up and somebody will tell you um, uh, the nice nice guys nice gals over there nice people that use that site and it's 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 been great I, I look at it all the time 
All right, now how this is going to work is that this is the landing page, as I said, very simple. And uh, we spent a lot of time working on fonts and all that sort of thing. And uh, But then on the page itself, this is what a product page will look like. There's a few things on here you won't see, some of the little green areas and the whatnot, just because it's this is the actually the editing page, but it is how it'll look visually. And it'll be very simple. It'll be three columns across, probably, possibly four, if it, if it fits and works well. And then down the left will be tags and categories that you can go through to find things. And uh, once you get to an item you like and you click it and opens it up, that's this is what a listing is going to look like. Um, as far as uh, images go, um, you won't have to go and have a, your own service the way they do on eBay and other sites where you have to pay for a service to help you do your listings and upload them. Um, we're not going to have limits on photographs. Don't put in a hundred of them but if you want to put in 10 or 15 or even 20 um, there'll be there'll be an allowance there you can you can certainly do that and how the items will be displayed this was one of the things that we worked a lot on was how to get the images to come up nice and big easy to use and work through because a lot of sites have that to some degree but they either stick the way they do on eBay sometimes or on live auctioneers they have different opening options depending on what you pay for I guess as a subscriber so some images open some images don't pain in the neck all of these images will open by clicking the magnifying glass and then you can scroll through the images just like this nice big images uh, nice uh, nice easy to read and when you're done you notice there's no Xbox to close out there's no box on here to close it all you have to do is click the screen it goes right back to where you were and then you can make your decision on what you want to do there will also be a way for you to contact the seller directly with questions or you know to make an offer for something or, or whatever it is all right so that's that and on the auction pages you can also ask questions uh things like you know what will the shipping be that kind of thing based on where you live but that's the update on that and there's a lot going on actually i just dealt with the, 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 one, of the one of the ladies that's doing this for us and um uh, this morning uh working on some things she had some great ideas and i told her to look into it and see if we can do that too all right uh, but again simple easy to use and uh it'll of course be linked off the bitamount main site and uh we're going to talk about it in the video each week as things begin to come in and i, I do hope all of you used it because we put a lot of work into this thing all right now over to what happened um on the uh, uh oh global member pages um, uh, this week, uh, over the weekend, I, did, I was doing some updating, and uh, I found we came across the bottoms catalogs, got those squared away, and was doing some work for the work laying out for the video that we did uh, earlier this week on Sotheby's, and came across a really nifty auction. It's on Live Auctioneers under on the on the on the global member pages. It's this. It's a it's a it's a Cooper the, one of the Cooper sales down in Maryland. It's a fantastic collection of uh, mostly late Ming and and Ching and lots of uh, very very fine export pieces but in the in this sale is also an, a, a great uh, reference library and uh, I have a lot of the books if not most of the books that are in here and uh, uh, they're all the classics they're really really great the, the Orient, you know oriental ceramics that's that giant survey book that was done series of books uh, these are huge that's a huge book it's uh, I don't know what is it 20 something inches and 20 inches tall or something these are all big books they have the Bauer collection which is a very hard set to get uh, these are extremely valuable the Bauer collection Collection is that over in Switzerland there's a museum uh, and then they have some of the best Chinese porcelain that has ever been collected uh, some very good books on bronzes and so forth uh, fine Chinese paintings all kind you got to go through these books if you're looking for books because a lot of the books on here if you bought them individually it probably cost you as much as the lot if you went to ABE or Amazon all right, there's some good opportunities. The Top Copy Sarai collection. You have the Survey of Chinese Art. There's another huge series, uh, big folios. Uh, these were done over 20 years ago of um, uh, official wares and you know, f draw hand line, dra you know, lawn drawings of profiles of plates, what their foot rims should look like. All kinds of good stuff. I, I have that set. I love it. Had it for years. All right, and then down here uh, are the ceramics. There's also more books coming up too, but there's some great ceramics in here and very fine and it's heavily focused on 18th century uh, bits uh, uh, Kang Shi Chin Lung examples and if you're a dealer you really want to check this sale out because there's some very very nice lots all right from paintings and prints woodblock prints um, to, to, to these kinds of things but what a couple of things I, I pulled out just to give you an idea is uh, 
is, is this. It's like a 10 Chinese Amari Kung Shi dishes with a six to $800 estimate. And uh, uh, if you're a dealer, you know, if you could buy that anywhere close to that estimate, you could, you could make some money. All right, and uh, then on to this, another set of nine American market, for the export, export for the American market dishes. These are absolutely beautiful, absolutely lovely. Um, classical, almost French looking um, in, in its taste. Uh, beautifully done overglazed blue uh, enamel work with lots of gilt in it. Uh, go back here just for a second, like that. Uh, notice the, the gilt tracery, all the little gilt, gilt work on it, even the shading is still intact. Beautiful, beautiful set of uh, dishes. And uh, seven to $800 estimate for nine of them. All right, seems like a bargain to me. And then over here, they have this very nice big crackware, uh, 14, 15 inch charger in good condition. Uh, it's got a single bid right now of 350 bucks, but it'll, it'll go up, it'll go up, they always do. And then this, this is this absolutely knocked me out. Um, it's a piece of Japanese uh, uh, Arita wear done around 1680 or 90. But what's amazing about it is, is this thing is enormous. It's 22 inches in diameter, obviously done in the manner of um, late Wan Li Chinese pieces, the way the Japanese were doing them, uh, but, but with their own flavor as far as the scrolling border goes and how the flowers are rendered and how, how the pot is rendered down here at the bottom and all that, very Japanese, but the overall appearance is quite like crackwares. But this thing is absolutely enormous, 22 inch charger. All right, 16 inch chargers are big, 18 inch chargers are big, but once you get once you get over 18, 19 inches, it's hard to make these. And this is a very, very good one. Uh, beautifully done. Uh, I see some uh, there's some stain lines on the back here from he where it's been on one of those metal uh, you know racks that they would hang on a wall back here. And I suspect that'll clean up. Get a condition report on it, and there's some staining here from the metal and so forth. But uh, uh, overall, just a great looking plate. It's got a, it's got a strong estimate, but it deserves it. Three to four thousand dollars with an opening bid of fifteen hundred. I don't know what the reserve is, if there is one. But uh, if you if you check, collect early Japanese ceramics, you want to look into this. This is a really good plate, a big one, a beast. All right, take out a tape measure and measure out 22 inches and imagine a piece of a Rita wear that big. Um, I've never seen one over, I don't think over 23 or four inches. I've seen them in Amari. They made some um, later Amari Meiji period plates that were uh, over 30 inches, but in th at this early period, they didn't really make huge pieces like this. All right, and then on to this. This is um, uh, what's been going over on eBay. Was this this nice little Kangxi uh, bowl with a, with, a, with a dragon, a chimera crawling down the side. It's got a Chenhua mark on it, and it was in pretty nice shape. I didn't see anything wrong with it. It went for $289. I think that was a good buy. This was a, a seller, Migalari, over in London had this. He had a good, he had about 100 things up, I think, last week. And all of the stuff, though, overall did pretty well, I thought. And uh, he also had this up, was this very nice, uh, very Kangxi style jar cobalt blue and so forth and, and maybe a few people thought that he was wrong on it. it is a 19th century jar but beautifully painted beautifully beautifully painted it's not a kangxi one but boy is it nicely done and i love the horse on it i love the way the horse is drawn and uh, in the end it did quite well it ended up bringing 1247 dollars but it was very attractive and it was a nice size um, it was, I think it was, what was it? It was uh, like like uh, eight inches tall. Nice, nice size. Nice visual look to it. And had a nicely done uh, hand carved lid. And then on to this was this uh, big double gourd piece that was inscribed. Again, 19th century. Beautiful quality though. Nice calligraphy, nice inscription. And um, ended up selling for $2,380. All right, calligraphy and inscribed pieces and pieces of unusual marks always draw a lot of attention. That was a nice one. And then over here to this, one of these late 19th century uh, cafe ground with the, with the brown dressing around the shoulder. This is a late 19th, maybe even early 20th century example, but it was beautifully done. I like the underglazed blue on it a lot. And I was wondering how it would do because it had been drilled. Like so many of these have, especially with this shape. It's an ideal shape for a table lamp. And it had a honking pole in the bottom, about an inch in diameter uh, from when somebody lamped it up probably, you know, 50, 60 years ago. Uh, there's the outside foot rim to it, nice iron oxide line running around. It all looked fine. And ended up selling for $366 with the hole in the bottom. All right, and I suspect maybe somebody, a few people wanted to put it back as a table lamp because it would look great in a room as a table lamp. Don't be afraid to put things back as lamps. Lamps are useful and they don't get broken because they don't get moved around a lot. 
All right, and then over to this, the Wan Li uh, uh, Karak uh, uh, export dish with the with the flower blossoms and so forth. It's a well-known pattern, um, and this one looked like it was in very, very good condition. It didn't have a lot of rim fretting to mention to speak of, which is very unusual for these. Always These always seem to have you know lots of rim frets, as you know. This one didn't have hardly any, and uh, it sold, I think, very reasonably, $144, all right? And then mosey along over to this, that fan. Uh, I talked about this last week because I thought it was just a really lovely piece of lacquer work. Uh, export post-1850, but beautiful quality uh, and still in good shape. Still had its original silk tassel. Uh, didn't have the box, but it had everything else. And it was it hadn't been rubbed down or messed with. But, you know, nobody cleaned it with ammonia and stripped off half the lacquer. And uh, it ended up selling still for $546. It was at about 100 bucks or so when we looked at it last week. And it went up just fine after that it did great all right but that's a nice fan i like those old fans and then over here was something that did pretty well it was in the newsletter page and what was interesting was was that it had a big crack in it and i got a feeling maybe the buyers didn't read this but at any rate it's but it is a spotted deer dish which are quite popular and uh it's it's, it's a nice example it didn't have a lot of fritting surprisingly but it did have a, a crack or a break in it and in the end it ended up selling for 412 dollars all right now over here to this was this the turquoise sensor i talked about this last week as well this was in the newsletter page on bit amount uh if you don't haven't subscribed yet to the newsletter page on bit amount go over there and do it uh and you'll get email notifications on friday when we update the page we put on hundreds of things as those of you that use the page all the time know that and it's a it's, it's completely free you can just go in and go through it once a week and see what's going on on the web anyway back to this this was just this nice turquoise incense burner uh shaped like like one of those uh, Ming examples, uh, nice looking foot on. It is a 19th century burner, but it was in beautiful, uh, beautiful colors. I like the shading. I like the variations in the blue. Had a faint crackle to it. Uh, I like the uh, mass candles, the way they sort of pieced on the on the clay to create the face, and they used different uh, colored uh, 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 glazes over it. They're they're sort of thick and dark blue, and some of it got here and all that good stuff. <clears throat> in the end, everybody I guess liked this a lot. It ended up selling for a thousand thirty-five dollars for for a, a late Qing incense burner. But it was pretty, and these pretty turquoise pieces, when when they're done right, always have interest in them. And this is a seller we've not seen before up in Toronto. They only have two feed. So we're going to check back and see if they put up more stuff because this was a nice object. And then on to this, the Chinese export uh, painting. Um, they have it uh, attributed to Tin Kua. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but at any rate, uh, it's a nice China trade painting. And what was interesting about it was it was so Western looking in many, many ways. The style of it, uh, uh, the, the way the mountains are done, you know, it looks like a Western Rockies almost painting or upstate New York Hudson River School painting. And I like the, the composition where the figures are placed, uh, very Western in its flavor, but a nice, nice Chinese example, obviously because of the figures is a Chinese farm here and oxen and children and all that, really charming. And it ended up selling for $2,430, which I think was a perfectly fair price. This was a nice painting. And it was sort of an unusual subject matter. We've all seen the Hongs a million times, and they're important, I realize, because the, the, the way the Hongs are depicted often will tell you when, when the painting was done by, the, by, the, by the, the position of the buildings and the scenes and the flags used and what kind of boats were in the harbors and all that. But this is a, just a landscape painting I thought was wonderful. All right, now, mosey over to this, was this uh, Kangxi period uh, vase with the biscuit uh, elephant uh, uh, or beast handles on the side with the rings in them. I think they're supposed to be like stylized elephants or something. But at any rate, uh, the, this style with the, with, the, with the biscuit handles was started during the latter Ming dynasty. And... Um, it was st still popular in certain areas of where the Kangxi potters. And this was a nice one. And in the end, it brought $1,159, which I think was perfectly fine. Good looking pot. And this was from Yuran Antiques over in London. And they also had up the next lot, which was this, this uh, nice looking sleeve vase in cobalt blue. Beautifully done 18th century example. Uh, uh, nice, 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 deep, rich sapphire blue cobalt. And uh, in the end, it did fine. It brought $1,106, uh, which is about right for that. Nice looking thing. And then over at Katowiki, uh, they had this, a pair of uh, 
uh, let's see, this was the pair of rose water bottles, Kang Shi period. Uh, they're not really a pair, they're sort of an assembled pair, but they made a lot of these uh, very similarly. A lot of them are exported to Southeast Asia, India, that kind of thing, rose water bottles. Uh, a number of them made their way into Europe, of course, and they were in collections there, in Holland especially, it seems. Um, and uh, th these were very, very nice. And I think somebody got a good buy. Uh, they bought the bought the two of them for um, what uh, uh, 1,100 euros, which I think is quite reasonable. Uh, these these can easily sell by themselves for six to nine hundred dollars. So I think this was a, a a good buy for someone. They got two at one bite, and then onto this was that uh, set of uh, pair of dishes. Hope you notice these. These were lovely. There are two of them. Uh, these are really interesting early uh, or mid 18th century examples. But I love the dragon, the ascending iron red dragon, chasing the pearl down towards the pagoda tower and then these overglazed blue rocky outcroppings with flowers. Very, very young Chen to early Chen Lung in flavor. And then this interesting quirky outer border with all kinds of elements from fungi to, to shells and whatnot. And uh, there were, as I said, there were two of them on here. Let's see if we scroll back and see them. But oh, there it is. There's the pair. All right. One of them had a chip out of the rim up here and something else. But other than that, not a big deal. But remember, these are. I always prefer things that have really interesting patterns and are really good looking over things that are boring, common, and uh, 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 imperfect. You know, I don't. I, I, I much prefer something like this. And um, this uh, pair of plates sold for 221 euros, which I think was a fabulous little buy for someone. I hope one of you got them. All right, yeah, Katawiki's had some good buys. Katawiki's just like eBay. If you go through there and you see something you like, re sign in, if you, if you register if you don't have an account with them. Sign in and leave a bid. You never know over there. Um, they have so many listings up, and uh, they're, 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 some of their pages aren't, aren't so quite so easy to navigate because of the way they list things. Uh, uh, it was actually something we thought of when we were doing our own pages. We don't want to do that because finding stuff over there can be a little bit confusing until you figure out the searches pretty well. But uh, things do get through there sometimes. You can get some good buys. All right, and then on to this, this nice late 80, probably Meiji period charger that was on there. But a good looking dish, nice, nice strong colors. The gilding was all in great shape. Notice the strength of the gilding all around it. Just beautifully done. Here's a picture of the back of it, all right, with the, uh, the, the apocryphal sort of Ming marks. And there is one of those big old fashioned iron stretchers, aluminum stretchers that they used to use on these uh, back in the day. And uh, this I think was a good buy. 361 euros for this great big plate. And this was good size, this was 42 centimeters. So it was, it was about 17 inches in diameter, but it had a nice sort of uh, deep cavetto on it, and the, the rim of it was, was nicely done. And I think that was a good purchase for a collector because it was also in great condition. And then this, I, I, I'm, I'm, the way this looks to me, I guess it sold. It had a big estimate, eight to ten thousand dollars, eight to ten thousand euros, but a, a beautifully done uh, Japanese uh, bronze standing Buddha, and it was good size. Uh, this thing was, uh, it was very attractive in its size. It was 45 centimeters tall, so about 17, 18 inches tall, and it looks like it had one bidder of three thousand euros. All right, and I'm going to watch and see if this comes back. Um, um, or did it or did it really sell or what was going on because this was a wonderful thing eight to ten thousand euro estimate but um, it, it said you it, it indicates the sign here indicates that it, it sold which means it, 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 it the reserve on it was almost nothing all right so if somebody got it for, for that they got a great buy a really great buy all right and then on to this these are things closing over the weekend some of you might rec recognize this this is that uh that transitional uh, uh jar with the with the uh with the uh palm trees on it with in the big foo lion on the other side or, or the kieran rather um uh quillins and kierans remember the difference uh they they have scales on them as opposed to foo lions at any rate this sold a few weeks ago for thousands of dollars evidently the the person that bought it didn't pay his bill uh and it's back up which is too bad. Uh, I hate it when they, that happens. It's got 22 hours to go. It's back up to $1,183. And I have a feeling it'll probably jump up again at the end. Uh, and if you bid on it before, it's just, and, and, and you, pay, you put a bid up on it and you still like it, put another bid on it, you might get yourself a heck of a nice buy. All right, uh, because something doesn't get paid for, it doesn't change what the object is. This is still a very nice pot. And uh, I, hope it, I hope whoever bids on it this time pays the bill. All right, and then this is coming up. This is over on Karawiki, is this. This is nifty. It's a joss stick or a candlestick holder of a Dutch Nanban figure, a European figure, done on, a, on Oribe. Uh, this is absolutely cool. It's only up to 50 bucks. If you're a Japanese pottery or porcelain collector, you want to look at this. 
This is nifty. I love that. And the details are excellent. Here's the back of it. Beautifully done. There's a little drawer that pulls out that holds matches or something, I guess. There's the iron, uh, the iron uh, nail for the, to, to hold the candle. Um, buy this and put candles in it, for heaven's sakes. It is a uh, good size. How tall is this? It's 25. It's 8 or 9 inches tall. All right, and it's uh, 13 centimeters in diameter. It's like 25 centimeters tall, so it's about eight inches tall. But a nice example. Um, if you're a Japanese pottery collector, buy this. This is great. It closes on Sunday. All right, I really like this. I really do. It's funky and cool. All right, in rare form. All right, and then over here, um, that is gone. That was the Meiji period piece. Uh, this closes in one day, 19 hours. Is this very nice Kangxi uh, uh, ewer that was uh, created with the silver top on it and all that. Nicely done ribbed body um, with insects and all that good stuff on it. There it is. Nice silver mounts, though. Beautiful, beautiful silver mounts. Love it. And uh, it's up to 650 euros. It closes in uh, a day. Uh, one day, 19 hours, so it closes Sunday. It'll be on the Katawiki pages on, on, on Bitamount. And then this closes um, in, uh, when does this close? This also closes on Sundays as really fine 18th century Famil Rose teapot. Beautifully painted, nice tight decoration. Young Chen period, probably. Um, what did they say it was? He says Chin Lung. I don't think so. That decoration looks more Young Chen to me than Chin Lung. But anyway. And then this one, there's another good-looking teapot on here. It's up to just $91. All right. There is a reserve on it, but I suspect it's not not too high. Uh, and if you like this kind of uh, porcelain, boy, take a shot at that. That's a good example. And then over on uh, eBay, this, the uh, the, necklace, the, the, the ruby necklace uh, uh, set closes on Sunday. I suspect it's going to do pretty well. It's up to $355. It's a 1920s, 20s, 30s thing. But uh, really elegantly presented in that beautiful box. And then over here to this. This was something um, I wanted to mention. Just we, This was in there, and I know a lot of you are saying, why is, why is that in here? This is an interesting thing. Um, uh, uh, my, my wife uh, reads Chinese, and she, she read this over the weekend. And it's a 50th anniversary uh, commemoration uh, for a family, for a wedding, for a marriage. And uh, it's mounted on top of the silk. It's beautifully done. I did send a note to the seller to let him know that's what it is in case he wanted to add it to the listing because it certainly makes it more interesting. And it certainly makes it a great gift if you have somebody coming up with a 50th wedding anniversary uh, uh, because it, 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 it's the Chinese version. And uh, especially if they have an interest in Chinese antiques, it's even more interesting. But anyway, it was a, a very, very lovely example. It's all framed and ready to hang. It ends on Sunday, and it's up to only $34, all right? Uh, now that you know what it is, it may seem more interesting to you, especially if, you've, if you're coming up on an anniversary or something like that. But beautiful quality, ready to go, and I, I urge one of you to buy that because it's a bit unusual and it's interesting. And it will look nice on a wall. It's pretty. All right. And uh, that's about it for the week. If you haven't joined us here on YouTube yet, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. We'll tell you when you'll be told when a new video comes up. We do at least one a week, sometimes two a week. And uh, come over to bitamount.com and sign up over there. Explore the site. And uh, stick around because there'll be more on the new website coming up in, uh, in the, in the, in the not-too-distant future. But we're trying to do it right so it doesn't turn into a pain in the neck for anybody. And uh, that takes a lot of work. But we're doing it. As you can see, it's coming together just fine. And... Uh, have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you all next week. We'll do the bottoms video as soon as we can on the bronzes, and uh, we'll, we'll maybe get one more in on a couple of the other sales that are happening. There's a lot happening down in New York, and, and I'm really glad to see it. They're doing a good job, and we'll see how the prices are, and we'll do some post-auction uh, 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 reviews after to go over the, how, the, how the prices went and how the auctions did overall. Okay. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you all next week. And uh, enjoy. We're in autumn now. I hate to say it. The summer, the summer uh, has ended. It's cloudy and cool here this morning on the ocean. Uh, it was about 60 degrees, 58 degrees this morning. Beginning of the end of the summer. All right. See you all next time. Bye-bye.